If you're in the market for investment-worthy bags, watches, and fine jewelry, Rebag is the answer. Rebag is a luxury resale marketplace where each piece is carefully vetted and verified by experts to ensure quality and authenticity. If you're in the market, use Rebag to buy and sell finds from the world's top brands, including Hermes, Chanel, and Cartier. Head to Rebag.com to get 10% off your first purchase with code REBAG10. Shop today at Rebag.com. That's R-E-B-A-G.com. And use promo code REBAG10 for 10% off your first purchase. Hey everyone, this is Fitz, and I hope you're doing well right now. Times are tough. Everyone's locked up. Some of you deserve that. But we're just trying to get through here at Go Power Cat and keep you entertained on the website. What this is, is a best of the overtime. That's right. During this little period of time, we're going to be going back and reviewing each month of this past broadcast season, if you want to call it that, starting with August of 2019 and picking the very best questions and answers from our fun Friday overtime. And I know the podcast says it's Friday, but it's Monday. Mind blown. Enjoy the best of the Power Cat Overtime podcast for August 2019. The following is a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. Discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat Overtime Podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor, and it starts right now. Now, let's go to the WTC Gig Powered Studios. Here's your host, GoPowerCat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to the Overtime. It's your Friday, fun day, getaway. Have a little fun, already said fun podcast. Can I give a shout out to me on the treadmill right now listening to this? No. I just did. Hey, Riley, go faster, you lazy wart. Nope, this is my cool down. Hey, Riley, cool down better, you bum. We're sponsored by The Fridge. We're in the WTC Gig Powered Studios. I'm Tim Fitzgerald, and I'm with Riley Gates and Zach Carlson, your normal podcast crew, at least for this podcast. And this is your Friday Power Cap Podcast, the overtime. It used to be part of the other podcast. Now it's this podcast, as we have a podcast every day. But you know that because we're in an abusive relationship. I give you so many podcasts that you are begging me to stop. That is not appropriate! That probably sounded worse than a minute. Yep. <laughs> I do this by accident. I apologize. <laughs> it's sad because it's, it does just happen. <laughs> it's, it really didn't. Zach's giving me a dirty look. Zach, when you have children, you're going to give the best. I am so disappointed in you look because you give yeah. it to me. I'm used to it. In fact, yeah. I had to go back into the uh, the regular podcast, the questions podcast, and cut some stuff out because Zach was disappointed in me. You've been a bad boy. He doesn't have to. We, we've been friends long enough. He doesn't have to say a word. I get it. I understand where we're at. It's we're like we're married. <laughs> <laughs> it's the overtime. <laughs> oh, poor you. You're not getting any. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> now it's definitely the overtime. Anything else? It's going to be awesome weather, unless they've changed the weather since we, we recorded this, then it'll be bad weather. It'll be the weather that the weather is when the weather happens. <laughs> you sound like a weatherman. <laughs> it's exactly how they should do the weather. If you look outside right now, it's the weather. <laughs> 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 and when weather happens later, you'll know the weather. <laughs> Back to you, news desk. Right now it's 82 degrees in our fair city and compare that to 48 degrees in the upper northwest and 38 degrees in the Middle East. I'd be a great weather. Just a blank stare coming from the news desk. (laughs) So uh, this is too much information, but I now have to uh, organize all my pills into like pill 
cases. So I've got an AM, PM pill case, right? Oh, you're officially old. I know. Well, I take uh, 10 pills in the morning and then uh, another five at night. When exactly are you dead? Here's your questions as we start into the overtime. From Wagcat, are locker room interviews not a thing in college? I know Snyder would never allow it, but do others? And if so, do you think you'll have access to the athletes, at least in veneer, after the games? We've had them at bowl games. <laughs> they were at the FCS National Championship. <laughs> That was yeah, they're, they're bowl games, they typically are. <laughs> that was disturbing. That was weird. I don't like them. People are hanging dong all over the place. They're weird. Let's, let's be honest. We're amongst friends here and 12 people listening to the Overtime Podcast. The locker room smells like ass. It smells worse than ass. I stink. Literally. So what is the problem, you would say? Go and take the shower. It is disturbingly... Like, I'm, if you're an athlete or coach, you probably get nose blind to it because right. you're used yeah. to it. It took me back to high school when I walked in. I was like, oh, yes, this was a thing. <laughs> but so much worse because there's so many more guys. Yeah. It's just... Uh, and and look, it's just not good. There's too many female reporters now. Um, it's And, and that's not because it's un- <laughs> just uncomfortable <laughs> for them. It's uncomfortable for the peak guys, too. The guys don't be... Tip- your normal guy doesn't want to just walk around naked in front of a female. Yeah. It, and like they do they give it to us in the NCAA tournament and the Big 12 tournament and you think it's great cuz you get to talk to however many players you want but also you're never going to be stacked up perfectly to a point where you're not getting congested. Sometimes Skylar Thompson and Dalton Schoen are going to be next to each other and then you're going to have a walk on that gets trapped because you're trying to talk to Jordan Brown and yeah. like it's just a mess. I appreciate having full access to whoever I want to talk to, but I feel like at some point the locker room is kind of like, hey, that's your... Now, pregame, if they did pregame like NBA, and the NBA, NBA does pre- MLB does that. That'd be fine. I That's fine. That's great for beat rewrites. Yeah. If they're writing a feature, they go in the pregame, talk to them real quick, and get out. They have like a window there where you can go in, and guys try to cut down on their... You know, well... The franchise wants you to cut down on your nonsense during. Uh, let's rein it in here. No slap dickery. Yeah. That's see. That's not a bad word because I put an ury on it. Um, yeah, I'm not for it. I don't want to see your. You know what? Dong. Also from Wagcat. What is a band and or actress or actor that everyone seems to love but you just can't get on board? Never been a fan of Little Big Town. We went to a concert after my freshman year of college. It was like a day after I finished, and it was Luke Bryan and uh, somebody else. I'm blanking on on who the other guy singer was and Little Big Town. And I straight up, like, I did not want to be there for Little Big Town. It was miserable. If you know me, you know two things about my musical taste. Well, three things. I love Michael Buble. I I enjoy country music. And I am a fan of the pop female pink Katy Perry, right? Two of those genres are covered by Taylor Swift. She was country, and then she became the pop female hater. Once in a while, I hear a song, it's okay. Yeah. But my home run hit on I Can't Get Aboard With, I've never seen him in concert. I passed up listening to him acoustic in Vegas, and I sure as hell don't like his new stuff, Garth Brooks. We'll turn that bottle up and drink it, crank that jukebox up and hang it barking for another round. Oh, piss off. See? Piss off. There. That's what you wanted, Wagcat. You wanted that. You wanted me to expose my soul. I, oh, this is not, this is not good. I'll go with actress Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, well, that just sounds lovely. You mean I don't do an interview where I say something that I shouldn't say and that I regret? Oh, that's a good one. That's actually really good. But she was in the Hunger Games. Not that hot. Not that hot. Not that funny. No. Just weird. Yeah. Just overrated across the board. I'm trying to think of actors. On the flip side, do you have someone you like that everyone else hates? That Luke used to be Brian. Mine's Kane Brown. Dude. You no. really like him? I actually, I here's, don't mind his here's music. Here's Kane Brown. Country. I like his music if they would specify it's not country music. Like Old Dominion now? Sure. They try to play it off like he's a country singer, and he's not. Half he literally has a song with Marshmallow. 
So? He's not a country singer. Riley, I, I am completely with you on Kanye Brown. Kanye Brown. <laughs> From I Like Pickles Cat, this is the last question of overtime. I'll give you quantity over quality this week, is what he says. And it's a bunch of kind of just quick ones. Here we go. Favorite Disney movie? Pixar's Disney now, right? Yeah. Up. Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. All right. Yeah. Did you cry when Dory, what's her name? Dory? Yeah. Got lost? That's Finding Dory. What's. Th- Nemo gets lost Nemo in the first gets one. Lost. <laughs> Christ. Oh my God! <laughs> it, That's explaining it. the name. <laughs> I'm out. Good podcast. Bye. Oh my God! You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. Favorite superhero movie. Oh, uh, they don't do superhero movies. Uh, the first Iron Man. It, the first Spider Man with Tobey Maguire. I don't know if it's my favorite, but uh, whatever Batman it was that Heath Ledger was the Joker. Oh, oh Doug, Dark yeah. Knight. Uh, Dark, Dark Knight. Batman. Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> I don't, don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? No, you. You complete me. Yeah, Sorry. Was, How did I forget about that? That was movies. That was because a great movie. Marvel has taken over, and that's why. Okay. You only think yeah. about Marvel. Dark Knight. Dark yeah. Knight. Might be it's a it, like the greatest great ever. movie, an incredible acting performance. So so incredible, he lost himself. It's amazing. Favorite comedy movie? Oh, this is so hard. Anchorman. There's so many good options. Yeah, I know. There. Anchorman's good. I'll go with The Hangover. Loved The Hangover until they did. I love Hangover. I love Hangover Three. Hangover Two is a joke. Because it all happened again? It's literally the exact same plot, except, oh, we're going to not do it in Las Vegas. That was the point. It's dumb. That was the point. This will never happen again, and it happened again. Well, yeah, I thought it was a good plot line. I thought it was stupid as hell. I'll go, uh, I really don't have a good one. Horrible Bosses. I like that. <laughs> That's pretty it's good, pretty good. <laughs> uh, Well, my, my sneaky one that is like one of my... Uh, uh, movies I don't like to talk about that I really like, and you guys might even know what it is because it's so old. Roxanne, Steve Martin movie, subtly, enjoyably funny. Hmm. It's going to take a lot to unseat Hangover and Anchorman. But I'll say this about Anchorman: when I when I'm flipping channels and it's on, I stop. Yeah, Hangover. I'll watch it a little bit, but Anchorman. There's not enough one-liners in the Hangover. Right. Yeah. Because we think in memes now and gifs. And the gifs from Anchorman are epic. I could survive, like, that question if you could only eat one food, you know, the rest of your life, what would it be? If I could only gif one genre, it would be Anchorman gifs. <laughs> I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. People know me. I'm very important. Uh, I have. Many leather-bound books, and my apartment smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> For the rest of my life. I've actually, w- I want to change my answer. It's Borat. That is my favorite ah, That movie. is, of course, your favorite movie. We knew yeah. that. We yeah. just didn't think of it. I'm my name is Borat. I like you. I like sex. It's nice. Quotes it all the time. No my name is Borat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was your first album or CD? Uh, Aaron Carter. Ooh. Ooh. Or, or not. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Carter. Is it I Want a Party or something like that? Uh, now, that summed up your life in Beloit. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. Uh, Aaron Carter's Aaron's Party, Come Get It, 2000. 2000. Okay. How old were you? Four. <laughs> He's a little bit old school for it. That goes a little something like this. Hold on, you remember getting an album or a CD? No, I don't remember it? getting it. I remember that was the first CD that, like, I listened to. Okay. Zach? I'm looking it up. Well, I got to save my answer for last, so we should stall right now. I had Aaron's Party Come Get It in 2000. I had O oh, Aaron in 2001 and Another Earthquake in 2002. Man, you, I was were, a big you had Carter the whole guy. catalog of Aaron Big Carter. Aaron Carter fan. 
Whatever happened to Aaron Carter? I don't know. He looks like he got into some drugs. Oh, that's a shocking thing to happen to him. I also had some Elvis CDs because my neighbor was an Elvis fan, and I was like... I'm impressed. Trying to be friends with him. Oh, just to be friends with him. Like, I was friends with him, but like I was trying to be like, oh, yeah, we're into the same things, and we weren't. <laughs> So, do you like Elvis or not? I mean, yeah, I like Elvis, but, like, he was a diehard, like, had everything. Did he dress up like Elvis on Halloween? No. He should have. Maybe. I have on some. found okay, my go. answer. I believe that it was Easter 1999. Six-year-old Zach got Britney Spears' debut album in the Easter basket. Thanks for taking the, Aaron Car- the pressure off of me with yeah. my Aaron Carter answer. Wow. But, like, that that kind of describes the era, though. Yeah. Like, I was, it was that, and then I was getting, you know, in sync and Backstreet boys. That bunny hated your ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I have, I don't remember my childhood very much, so I, I can't go back as far as you guys did because it was, you know, prehistoric. I remember when I was really young having a little, my sister had a little record player and we'd put 45s on it. I don't have any clue what they were. The first album I really remember listening to on uh, repeat was an Elton John album. And because that was um, inherited from my uh, older siblings. The first thing I actually remember listening to over and over in my car was a Bob Seger, wait for it, A track. Seems like yesterday, but it was long ago. It would get to the end of the first, you know, uh, track, and it'd just stop the little song and please flip click. over, and then you'd go to the next. It was just um, unbelievable the crap we put up with. We had we had phones that had cords on them, and you could only go so far. Wow. From KSU number one, Popeyes, Wendy's, Raising Cane's, Sonic, KFC, or Chick Fil A, who has the best chicken sandwich? We don't know. Well, we're not going to do a taste test here. Would love to. We don't know. We're not allowed to have Popeye's chicken sandwiches in Manhattan, Kansas. Nobody at anywhere is allowed to have Popeye's chicken sandwiches because they have announced today that they are sold out. They have no more chicken sandwiches left. How is that possible? I don't get it. Make more chickens. Did they not properly test this before they released it? I think they probably tested it. But no, but there's more problems with this. We don't have it in Manhattan, and apparently other Midwestern places don't have it, because they didn't receive the bun machine. First of all, I'm impressed they have a bun machine. I thought you had to go That's to Genesis to work the bun machine. That's why we didn't get it here? Yeah. They don't have a bun machine. Whatever that means. Why wouldn't you have a bun machine for every franchise if you're rolling out chicken sandwiches? So that alone tells me their story about we had so many for through September is yeah. BS. You you didn't even have enough for you weren't even supplying some of your restaurants. I'm it's, bitter. It's obviously tough to make a call without trying them all. I know. Um and as I've stated on Twitter, I love all chicken sandwiches, so frankly it's not that big of a deal to me. That said, Chick-fil-A didn't invent the chicken. They just invented the chicken sandwich. And it's tough to beat the original. Okay, let me give you my takes. Read the list again. Popeyes, Wendy's, Raising Cane's, Sonic, KFC, Chick-fil-A. I am never having a chicken sandwich at Sonic. <laughs> Raising Cane's is not a chicken sandwich. It's a chicken strips sandwich. That does not count. It's chicken strips on a bun. That does not count. That is, you learned how to make a chicken sandwich at the fraternity house. <laughs> right? I, that's yeah. not a chicken sandwich. I haven't had um, Popeye's, as we established, because they hate us. Wendy's actually has good chicken sandwiches. They do. They do. They, they do a really good job do. of that. Especially the spicy. You know, if you, if you uh, want to try to lose a little weight but not really put much effort into it, get the Wendy's chicken sandwich with some chili. I... That sounds pretty filling. <laughs> but that, that's what I'm saying. It's very filling, but it's far less calories than your big old burger and fries. No way. Is it? <laughs> There's no way. A bowl of chili and a chicken sandwich that was fried. No, I wouldn't get fried. I'd get grilled oh, okay. sandwiches. Okay. Uh, you got to specify. I get no, grilled, grilled at Wendy's. Yeah. Okay. Everything else is fried here. So now, I will say this. Wendy's has a better grilled ch- sandwich than Chick-fil-A. Disagree. I don't think so, homie. But that fried Chick-fil-A sandwich, the deluxe with cheese is, oh, it's so good. You didn't say KFC. 
Would you? Uh, I, do they do a chicken sandwich or do they do the... the they do the little mini ones, just, I think. Just I go ahead and stick to the famous bowl. <laughs> we well, got see, the Cheetos one yeah, it was here's, a few weeks ago. Here's the thing is some of these aren't... I mean, I don't go to a bone-in chicken place to get a sandwich. And maybe that's where the people at Popeye's were a little confused. They didn't expect when you can go in and get like an eight-piece meal which is what it is to me, uh, that people go, no, I don't want the bone. I want the chicken sandwich. The world has changed. Again, millennials. It's millennials, man. I'm your substitute teacher, Mr. Garvey. I taught school for 20 years in the inner city, so don't even think about messing with me. Y'all feel me? I don't want to have the bone. I don't want to touch it. Let's do you think chicken. Popeyes would give you a bun if you ask? Because clearly they probably have buns in there. Uh, do you think they give you a bun and you could buy the tenders, put the tenders on? Because it's probably about the same thing. I don't know how it works. I don't know how they supply. If they ran out of chicken sandwiches, which means the chicken, you probably would appropriately I've run, uh, out of buns. run out of buns. Three great workouts for your buns. So yeah. I don't so care enough to go find out. I don't understand. Were they coaching chickens specifically for this task? Son, when you grow up, you're going to be a sandwich, not a bone-in chicken. Oh, really? Well, they, they don't grow up. They they ax them pretty damn quick. They uh, they don't get full-sized. What? I don't know. I'm just guessing. No, that's a thing. Why would you do that to them? Because they're delicious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Never mind. How could you eat one of those things? Are you so, asking for recipes? We We don't know. But I'll take Chick Fil A. Yeah, I don't care. I'm taking Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. I would like to have an opportunity to try Popeyes, but apparently because we're in the middle of the U.S., we don't count as much to them. I'm ignoring you. From GT Cat, the Chris Kleiman era could usher in a new ice cream option to the press box freezer. What is it? It's a great question. Holy crap! Who was this from? GT Cat. Grant, this is a deep. Deep question, and I appreciate you asking. When Riley read this to me earlier, I thought it was like an actual, like, there was a source behind it. But it's just GT. <laughs> this isn't. Um, I I have the answer that blows away all. Do you guys ever, you guys have the, does Swan's Man, Schwann's Man, does he come to Manhattan ever? Yeah. Okay. Every I didn't, I've never seen the Schwann's Man. We always had Schwann's Man. I'll be back. Like, where are you going? Yeah, keep talking. Okay. Is he going to get ice cream right now? I don't I think know. He is. I think he is. Um, no, but when we, uh, like, we always had Schwann's Man come by when we were growing up, and we'd get, like, different food things or whatever, but the one thing we always got was the the drumsticks, right? Yeah. I'd be, yeah. I've eaten many of those. Has to be that. Schwann's. Has to be that, right? But don't they have drumsticks? Like a Nestle drumstick they've had Do they? before. Maybe not recently, but I feel like there's been one up there. They just kind of pick and choose what they stock it with. Hmm. It, it, if like, if they had it, if they have it, then I've just not seen it. Because sometimes they'll have Oreo Klondikes. Sometimes they'll. This have... man just got ice cream in the middle of the podcast. It's a Magnum bar. What in the hell? Yep. We're eating it. He's eating it. He's gonna eat it on the podcast. A Magnum. Caramel chocolate. What is going on with it? <laughs> oh my god, that looks so bad. <laughs> It's all over frozen. Freezer burn? No. No? I'm sh- What is that? It looks like oh, so sweet potato. Oh, you're no. spilling. No. We have one rule in this podcast studio. No food. And you broke it. One rule. Mm. I'd probably say the drumsticks if... If those aren't a thing, I'd say the drumsticks. They have them. Okay. See, I'm, I, yeah. I guess I missed it. Um, Excuse me. Still spilling. Good lord. So oh, I, I know they could never do this, but I'm just going to say it for fun. You know, you ever go to Dairy Queen and get those little, like, small... They had them in the freezer. They didn't, It wasn't like something you ordered. They had them in the freezer. It was like a little... Uh, a dilly bar? No, 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 no. Oh, but dilly bars would be dope. KU has dilly bars. That's why you don't have them. Yeah. It was like little cups. And it was... I want to say it was like a mini ice cream cake, essentially. This is very good. That's, that's kind of what it was. It had all the ingredients of an ice cream cake yeah. in a cup. Those would be neat. I know they can't do that, but it'd be neat. I just want some Bluebell. 
like a bluebill self serve cup. That's fair. Of That's vanilla fair. ice cream. Not a bad idea. Dilly bars though. That's that'll be my answer. The Magnum double chocolate with caramel and ice cream. So good. I didn't think this through. Now I got to finish this. You idiot. Let's go to the next question. What's wrong with you? Is your January looking dry? Get some lotion. Get a humidifier. And better yet, get Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can compare prices across local stores to get the best price on a huge selection of drinks perfect for dry January. Every single time. Non-alcoholic wines? Have a look. Ready-made mocktails? Grab a straw and order them up. Beer without the alcohol? Yep, take your pick. You can find all of them here, in the app, in that phone that's in your hand. Could it be any simpler? Nope, not a chance. So shop for great deals on all your dry January beverages or other drinks and get them delivered to your door or blanket fort, maybe. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. And don't forget to lotion up your elbows. They're looking a little dry. Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. I'm here to tell you about Bowl & Branch and how you can discover this new level of softness with their iconic sheets. In a recent customer survey, 96% responded that Bowl & Branch sheets get softer with every wash. They source the rarest 100% organic cotton for an incredible softness to start. Then they skip the toxins and harsh chemicals for a natural feel unlike anything else, and it all comes together with their signature weave. This special design feels buttery, breathable, and unlocks new levels of softness with every wash, and they stand behind their promise of softness. With their 30-night guarantee, you can wash, style, and sleep in their sheets for an entire month. If during the 30 nights, you don't love your sheets or feel them getting softer and softer, you can send them right back. No questions asked. So head to bowlandbranch.com for 15% off your first order with code ODYSSEY. That's B-O-L-L and branch.com. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Uh, next question is from Chris, 66204. Let's get weird. Oh, Using God, public bathrooms happened. for number two, yes or no? No. Go ahead. I don't think it's as bad as people say sometimes, um, but certain ones are. And it's tough to like really point out, oh, well, they had a bad one. Like, I've gone into a McDonald's bath. Like, sometimes you got to go where you got to go, you know. And you know, coming back from, like, Hayes or something, I'll, I'll go through Russell or something like that and be like, man, I got to go to the bathroom. You go to McDonald's, you would think, hey, that's that's really gross, but that's fine. I've never gotten sick after going into a public bathroom and using it. So, like, okay. what are your what are your argument? I mean, when I was in high school, I never did. I was like, no, no. I'm not going to use a school bathroom. And then you never went in at school. Never. No. Oh, that's impressive, Zach. Dude, you, like no. at school, you you have a good poop schedule. What are they saying? At that point, either in the morning or after, and if it's like three thirty or whatever or four, and that's when it happens, it happens. That's I'm impressive. Never, that you never made it through at school. school. I did it in school all the time. Well, as someone who at a younger age suffered from irritable bowel syndrome. You don't always get a pick. But I've always thought that uh, going number two is a lot like scheduling football games. What did he say? I'm kind of Bill Snyder. I'd rather play at home, but I will do it on a neutral field. Yeah. Some people are like Gary Patterson. He will do it anywhere, man. You want to schedule him? He he will go. He will do it in an airport. He will play uh, at school. He will do it anywhere, anytime. I'm not one of those people. You know, hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to go over here in Tanner's and poop. Everybody poops. Everybody poops. Sure. No, no, no. See, my only rule with it is like, don't do it where other at a place like Tanner's. If people are going in like they've had beers and you know, they're taking they're taking a leak or something like that, don't stink up the bathroom like that. But if it's a gas station or something, hotel lobby. Yeah, if you are sharing a hotel room, but use the hotel lobby because yeah. don't stink up your own room. Okay, hotel lobby. 
I put under neutral territory. Hotels are absolutely. But if you're sharing a room with someone, i.e., yeah. when Zach and I go on yeah. the road, don't do it. We always use the hotel lobby. Always go downstairs. I mean, nope. It's because you get your own room. From KNED, I'm all for safe digging, but can the increased media availability attract a higher revenue producing sponsor on the backdrop? Oh, there are more oh, advertising crap. opportunities these days. Do they still do the 811 before you dig ad on the radio broadcast? Is that why it's a thing? I don't know. I mean, they sponsor, they're big Learfield sponsor. Call before you dig. You dig? 811. Call before you dig. Know what's below? Why do they have that kind of money to sponsor? I know how much these things cost. That is expensive, what they're paying for. It's expensive. Why? Here's the one thing we know. I will know if they're changing sponsors. Because I believe K-State said the other day they were looking into getting a new backdrop. Because the backdrop is rather beat up. It's a little hurt. It's playing hurt right now. And if you... If you watch our videos, it doesn't look bad. If you're in the press conference room, it looks really bad. <laughs> That's horrible, and I'm with him. That sponsors, I but I, I hate to tell so. if they get a new one. I don't think they're getting a new sponsor because they're getting a new backdrop on a whim. That's what I'm saying. If they get a new backdrop, we'll know if they're getting a new sponsor. Well, but they're getting a new backdrop on a whim. Yeah, they're, they're like let's get. They one. could probably they're make like, call. I bet you they've had calls like, "Hey, how much is it to have that?" Backdrop. I, all I know is 811, nobody, you're just annoying people now. It's no longer effective advertising. Right. I'm Question sorry. Who would it be if 811, let's just say they were out of the picture? Who do you think it would be? ATT. Whoever the telecoms sponsor is for K State, it switches between. Verizon and AT&T all the time. What? One touch of the five-star button turns the jitterbug into a personal safety device. Could it be uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe? Carl Ice gets the company to... Sure. Could it be Rev Honey, the official energy drink of the K-State Wildcats? <laughs> oh, my God. Rev. During Ron Prince's... Time. Can we talk about that era? <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. It's... I like to think it would be Chick-fil-A, but I know it wouldn't be. Oh, oh, what about uh, Spangles? Or, it's not Spangles. Uh, Brahms. Brahms. It could be Brahms. Mm. That's a pretty big nickel. Yeah, we'll see. We've gone too far. Sorry. Let's come back in. Okay. From Ema Wildcat 82 I have Salina questions for Fitz and uh, anyone, bring it on! anyone else that wants to answer them. Never seen someone get that passionate about Salina. Cozy Inn or Scheme Pizza? Scheme. I have not heard of Scheme, so I just want to say Cozy because I like Cozy. Scheme Pizza. Uh, cozy, uh, if you live in Salina, you, uh, the new owners thankfully put the walk-up window so you don't have to go in and smell like body odor. But Scheme well, is the coolest restaurant, coolest pizza place ever. Do you put the honey in the crust? No, I don't do that. That's weird. I think it's. Uh, I haven't had Scheme Pizza in so long. Man. My wife's had it more recently than I have. But the thing about the scheme is they make so honking much money on, like, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. This shut down. Yeah. It's only open, like, three days. And if they go on vacation, it's shut down. They just – it's it's a great business plan. It's a really cool atmosphere, incredible pizza. Scheme. Boom. Next. Uh, how many Cozy Burgers have you consumed in one session? 24, and I regret it to this day. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> What on earth were you thinking? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, they're little tiny sliders. Yeah. I think I did I like eight done, or ten. I think I've done eight. When we ate that Crave case at White Castle, and those are the same size, we didn't knock out 30 together. I think I ate ten of those, and you ate less probably. You had 24 Cozy yeah, Burgers? that was way long ago, like in high school, or my, it might have been the summer between my freshman Wow, summer I years. think I could do it hammered, but... <laughs> I'm so drunk. Wow. I probably was. I don't, I don't know. How long did the smell reside in your vehicle? <laughs> oh, my God. It's just so bad. But this was in the day when everyone had a trunk. Not many people have trunks anymore. You know, a lot of us just have open. But you can go, you would go get it and put it in the trunk. Maybe, and if you had a cooler, you put it in the cooler. Put it in a Yeti. So it's kind of like our bad smell out of the fridge. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, <laughs> did that solve it? By the way, I don't know. Yeah. It still kind of lingers, but I don't know how yeah. something can smell so bad and yet be so delicious. That's amazing. I love cozy, but it's got to be. Uh, my apologies to the Manhattan cozy. It's got to be this line of cozy. It's the grill. It's the seasoned grill that yeah. makes it good. I think yeah. we should do a blind taste test. <laughs> oh, I guarantee you can knock it out. Oh. I guarantee it. I'm never coming close to 24. I think when they moved back, I got a dozen, and I got about eight or nine in. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> what is this? What is my life? Well, now the one here is only open late night on weekends. Is it even open anymore? I, I guess, guess it is, and they add cheese in the just room. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then what is your emotional reaction to Salina South being allowed to play on Salina Central's football field? It's always been that way. It hurts. Hey! Hey, get the f- off my lawn! Something not right about these neighbors. Go Mustangs. Where'd you go? Central? Central. Well, it was Salina High School, was it? Well, but all my life. Um, all, I mean, my brother... Hell, it's been that way forever. I was thinking he thought it was new. My brother, who's roughly 10 years older than I am, his senior class was the first year of South and Central. Oh. So we're talking in the early 70s. So his class, if they lived in the South End, could go to South, but most of them just stayed at Central. I guess I didn't realize that South was open when you were in high school. One when I was in high school was when my brother was. So yeah. oh, young. Yeah. You said younger. Sorry. Yeah. My bad. So it was. It, I grew up basically. I mean, in 1972, 73, whatever class Mike was in. I mean, I'm. I was born in '64, so I'm eight. I don't remember it really. So, you know, it's always been that way. They've always played on the field. Uh, yeah, it's just the way it is, man. Just weird. From K-State Legion. No more Salina questions? No more Salina questions. Okay, dude, I, I want to know if people still drag the Fay. If that's a thing. Nobody knows what that means. I don't know what that means. A lot of people do. All right, all right, all right. My wife is starting to get into fantasy football, KSA Legion oh asks. Um, she wants to know what your advice would be f- here for her first round pick. I fantasize about Ben being a full body pillow so we could stop having sex and just cuddle. Don't really? sniff a quarterback. Do not even touch him. Well, especially they've been playing. Don't sniff him. Don't. Oh. KSA Legion, are you in the same league as her? Because if you are, you could tell her to draft you a quarterback. You should tell her to draft a quarterback. But because you don't want to lose your wife. You can lose to anybody. Don't lose to your wife. But you need to hit running backs hard. Like, t- take a running back in the first round, especially if you're starting without keepers. There's there's small amounts of elite running backs out there. Um, don't be afraid to take Zeke, even though he's still holding out. Don't follow that advice. I said don't be afraid to. I be said, afraid to. Be afraid. Zeke will play this year. Riley is a Cowboys fan. Who Zeke will play before Melvin Gordon plays. Hello! Nerds. Okay. Anyways, who cares? No, but take pound running backs early. Um, look into receivers, but don't reach for receivers because there's only about there's only a couple receivers out there that like are going to consistently. I guess what I'm trying to say is you can get a good receiver late. There's always tons of options out there. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? Like I said, pound the running backs, get somebody elite from the start, and you're going to be in good shape. But depending on how big your league is, if it's a big league and you have a late first-round pick and it's a snake draft and you're going to come back around, don't be afraid to take a couple wide receivers that yeah. are good. But don't take a quarterback. Don't even, t- well, even in a big draft? Even in a I mean, how big? I, if you have well, more than 12 teams in your league, your league is absurd. Right. But if you're you know 10 to 12, if your pick is you know eight in that 8 to 12 range and you're going to be back around... You know, really, there's only about six or seven running backs, and they're all going to be snatched up at the very beginning. Right. And then you have a bunch of just kind of guys that you can get later, and you can, you're can you going to get better value with wide receivers or quarterbacks before some of those running backs. I don't think you should take a quarterback until the fourth round at the earliest. Understand fantasy football. And if people are going at quarterbacks in the first and second round, don't give in to the pressure. Just don't do it. Do what you want. Yeah, frankly, I don't win tons. I just win enough to be close. Okay, that's so. great advice then. Thanks. <laughs> Draft Zeke. Uh, also from Alec Pickles. Oh, cat. my God. 
Is it sock, sock, shoe, shoe, or sock, shoe, sock, shoe? Uh, sock, 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 shoe, shoe. Yes. Sock, sock, shoe, shoe. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's, I'll, I'll put on the socks sometimes and not put on shoes for another hour or something. I'll walk around the house. It's also, I guys, like to tie, tie them at the same time. It's just an OCD thing. Yeah, that makes sense. What do you mean, tie them at the same time? Like, tie my right shoe, done, then tie my left shoe, That's done. technically not the same time. Oh Tying them at the same time would be with your right, doing one hand on each shoe. It'd be hard. It'd be difficult. Today, I'm going to show you a simple technique for teaching children how to tie their shoelaces. Uh, last question of overtime from Prairie Cat. If you toured the tailgates like Robert, what would be the one food item you wouldn't pass up? I would leave with a sampling of chicken wings. Do people do chicken wings at their yeah, tailgates? Yeah, I've been offered chicken wings many a time, but I don't like to eat chicken wings standing in the tailgate because then i got chicken wing on me. Yeah, yeah. But see, Robert and how he doesn't have food poisoning 95% of his life, I don't know. He will take a bunch of uh, baggies. In fact, if you really, if you're expecting Robert at your tailgate, just pre-make him baggies. So that he doesn't have to stop and spend so much time. He explained this one year. If you could have his food ready, that'd be great. <laughs> if you could take your food that you paid for with your money, with right. your hard-earned job, right? The food that you cooked with your hard, your, your you know, with your hands, put it in a bag that you had to purchase, right? And just give it away. That, that'd it. be really great for him. Pre-prepare the baggie. But still let it be warm so that he can maintain a proper heat when he puts it inside of his jacket and keeps it there the rest of the day. And How he gets it into the stadium, I'm not sure, but this happens. He, If you shot Robert on game day, he would not be hit by the bullet. It would be stopped by a delicious selection of meats. Oh, and if his water could be room temperature, that'd be great, too. He does enjoy a delicious trail mix. Not not your just off the shelf trail mix like like connoisseur trail mix. Man, Robert's just trying to be polite. You guys all have all this delicious food and you offer it to him, and he has a small stomach. He's not a big guy. He's not Fitz. He's not me. Whoa. Hello, hello, Riley. <laughs> Do you have my food bagged up because I would like to take it? That way, I don't have to spend as much time with you, and I can move on to other tailgates and get more food. Does he? Listen he just to wants this? to try everybody's food. I am not insulting him. This is exactly his plan. He's written it on our website in the past. That's fair. <laughs> He's got to try all of the food. He wants to get around, and say hi to everyone. Robert's tailgate schedule is in Robert's words, by the way. It is. If you haven't read Robert's words, and I think everyone has read it by now based on the numbers. <laughs> it's doing better than a lot of our normal content. No, let's not lie. It's doing better than all of our normal content. It kind of went viral on Facebook. and You people are it. weird. Yeah. But his schedule's in there. Say hi to Robert. He is a wonderful, wonderful guy. He's wired a little bit differently, but that's why I love him. Does he get on my nerves once in a while? Yes. But he also will say, Tim, I'm here to aggravate you because he knows he aggravates me. I love him. <laughs> if I was a multimillionaire, I would set him up so he didn't have to worry about a bill the rest of his life. He's a wonderful guy. He's been to every Kansas State football road game since the 70s. I can't remember where I wrote it. I can't remember what it was. It's unbelievable what he's done and how much he loves Kansas State and the amount of time he puts in going to games and going to things. If you see Robert, treat him well, say hi, and, uh, yeah, he's a good dude. That's it, isn't it? That hey, is it. But please, prepackage his food. And if you see me, prepackage food for me, too, because I would like a snack. Because mm. we never know what we're going to get in the press box. I mean, Nickel State is what, the Colonials? Or the Colonels. Colonels. They're, they're the Colonels. They're, right? But they're from Louisiana, so expect Cajun. Right. Yes, this is how it works. We get whatever food they get better at their home venue. 
We don't fix the food we're really good at, which would probably be barbecue or steaks or something like that. The food in the press box is a lesser version of what they can eat at home, which I don't understand. So, if it's Cajun spiced, going back to a previous topic, there's a good chance Saturday in the press box, I'll be playing on the road. You've been listening to the Power Cat Overtime Podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Power Cat Podcast, all rights reserved, gopowercat.com and Spirit Street Publishing. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.